and welcome to Lady Ada. Hey everybody and welcome to my desk. It's me, Lady Ada, at my desk uh, doing all sorts of engineering this week. Uh, so let's check out some of the cool stuff I've been working on. So let's go to the computer. Um, okay, so um, on my computer, let me just like move some stuff around here, make some room. Um, a few Wow, it's been two years. A few years ago, um, I did a great search on finding an alternative for um, the Seesaw chip that we used historically, the SAMD09, which we used in like, um, let's see, we used this in the uh, soil sensor, the stem of soil sensor, and also the Seesaw, like rotary, sorry, rotary encoder. Um, oops, not that one this one uh so like this breakout here if I look at the back it has a you can kind of barely see it a Sam D09 on it and um this is the original firmware that Dean uh who was at Adafruit a couple years ago wrote that allowed us to do I squared C to anything conversion so like I squared C to ADC I squared C to rotary encoder like you program firmware onto this chip and then it would turn it into an I squared C um, like extender. And this was basically because, you know, you can get I squared C to GPIO, you can even get I squared C to um, analog digital converter, but like there's no such thing as an I squared C to rotary encoder, or I squared C to NeoPixel adapter. So originally we used the SAMD09, but then chip shortage hit and like basically any ARM Cortex chips were nearly impossible to get. And so we did that great search um, to get, um, uh, when we found uh, the AT Tiny uh, 818, I think, or it's 1618 or 808. Yeah, 816. Um, and this is actually a really uh, great chip. And this was also unavailable. Of course, now you can see there's tons in stock. And so we did um, a bunch of breakouts uh, with this uh, family. Let's see. You can just search the store or the shop. I can search the shop. Um, so I made the 816 and 1616 breakout. So these are both, um, in the 817 as well. turns out that I actually kind of like the 816. It's, it's much smaller. It's much more available than the 817. Um, it's a, uh, tiny chip, but it has analog digital input. It has GPIO. It has interrupts. It has tons of pins. Uh, one thing I really like about this chip family is it's three or five volt compatible because it's an AT tiny. You can program it with one pin, the UPDI, and it's like a serial port. So it's like very easy to program it. You don't need like a whole shebang. It's like any USB serial adapter will work. Um, and there's a great core for it by Spence Conde, who uh, wrote the teeny mega core. So this, uh, the 816 has a AK flash, a half a K RAM, and even has some EEPROM, which is also great because we can use that to store like the I2C address or um, specifications. And I did this breakout, the 816. Um, and then I did the 1616. Um, and these are both um, the same pin out. The 1616 has 16K of flash and 2K of RAM. So it's actually kind of close to an Arduino and capability. But again, the chip is only like, you know, 80 cents on DigiKey. So, um, Having done those breakouts, I wanted to then um, revisit and redo a bunch of my um, original I squared C Stemma breakouts that were going to be Sam D09, and then I had to redesign them for um, the 816. So the first one uh, that I designed that I wanted to revisit was this ANO rotary encoder adapter. So the ANO rotary encoder. Um, is which I think I showed. It's it's this really cool like iPod esque wheel. It's got up, down, left, right, and a button. And this is a scroll wheel. So it's it's a rotary encoder. It's all mechanical. It's not like a modern well, modern iPod. The more recent iPod. This is like the original iPod with the classic rotary scroll wheel. Um, really fun and tactile. But you need like a ton of GPIOs to use this because you need two GPIOs for the rotary encoder, and then you need five GPIOs for the switches. Um, and you also have to constantly like be checking them and doing interrupt stuff. So I thought this would be a great candidate for rotary encoder support. So this is the uh, prototypes. Let's go to the computer. Oh, sorry, the overhead. 
so this is the um, design for the PCB. And uh, you see there's the holes for the rotary encoder. Um, this is the ATtiny816. There's a slot here for the NeoPixel, but I didn't solder it, and I'll show you why. I did for one, and then I'll show you why I did for the others. And then Stemma QT. Normally, I like to have the Stemma QT centered, but because of the weird hole locations for the, um, the order encoder, you can't. And then this is the final uh, built version where it has the NeoPixel. So the NeoPixel, I thought, might shine through, uh, but, like, it totally doesn't at all. It's extremely opaque. Uh, so I'm just going to remove it because um, it would have been cool to have. Like, it actually does, um, this demo does have it change color. You can kind of see it changing yellow and then it's like green and then it's blue um but you can't uh you can't see it from the other side and then um there's also uh interrupt over here i think if i you can see it flashing when i press the button um what's nice is this is all over i squared c so what i do is um so let's go back to the computer and i'll show the code for this so the way the code works is that um this example here the ano encoder I, I run this in arduino and i have all these like pound defined configs where i set which pins and like which neopixel you know if there's neopixel support and uh the default i squared c address and the product code which you can read the product code from over i squared c to verify it's the thing you think it is and um you know how many encoders and what pin it is and then i program this uh again with this um core called uh, teeny mega core and you do have to like select all these things um the you know the frequency and the chip and whatever um but thankfully the core that spencer wrote is like almost completely arduino compatible and so i can even do stuff like have serial print debugs it's over uart not usb but it's very handy um and then i have just this you know in initialization code and then the run loop that just constantly listens for I squared C and then um, does whatever the command says to do. Um, so after I upload this and, and you upload it over serial UPDI, which is, um, you know, this is just a USB serial converter, then on the uh, separate IDE, and this is a great thing about Windows going to have multiple IDEs open. Um, this is where I, you know, define the code that actually connects to I, the I squared C device, uh, verifies that I have the right chip it looks for that again that version number 5740 that's the product id and then um sets the switches to input pull-ups and then reads the encoder so if i go to here and i'll reset it so you see the output okay found a seesaw found the right product code turned on the interrupt so now um when i spin this around you see the number goes up and then if i spin it the other direction it goes down and then if I press the buttons, they print out. And so this is a great, you know, it's over I squared C. Um, and I can have multiple devices on one I squared C bus. So if you want to have multiple rotary encoders, um, again, something that would be very hard to do on an Arduino um, so without having an assistive like uh, device to do it. Um, so this design, other than the fact that the NeoPixel doesn't work, works pretty well. Okay, and then um, I've got a couple other designs. We can go to the overhead. Okay, um, so another design that I haven't tested yet, but that's next because this is the one I was working on today, the, the ANL. Um, this is a I squared C to NeoPixel adapter. So a common thing that we have is people who have a um, Blinka compatible board, like an Orange Pi or like an Onion Omega or like some rock chip linux which am i jigger and they're like i want to use um new pixels with it but new pixels need that like specific pin timing that's like very very uh uh delicate like it has to be you have to have, to have the interrupts off or you have to use dma and people figure out how to do it on the raspberry pi chipset because there's like billions of people with raspberry pis and so it's worth the effort but it's not worth the effort to like add NeoPixels to support to every nvidia chipset, rock chip, all winner. There's just, it, there's so many of them and not enough users. And frankly, it's just a lot of work. Um, so instead, as, you know, as long as you don't need very fast updates, this has an ATtiny1616, 
um, and which has 2K of RAM, so you can like control, you know, 500 pixels or something, even though like it's a very slow update because you've updated over I squared C. You can at least set this to like, you know, one megahertz update and then you can control pixels. So you can do basic lighting effects like you could do um, basic animations. Like it's not going to beat having a standalone um, native NeoPixel support, but it's okay. You know, and then you give it a uh, five volt and power and then, um, you know, power in and then power and data out. So this, these two are connected. Uh, you can't power the NeoPixels over um, the Stemma QT because uh, the these connectors are only really good for like 100 milliamps. So I wouldn't even let people do it. I'd say, hey, you have to power the pixels separately, um, but you at least will be able to control pixels if you just want to get them tested or working or you want to do some basic ambient lighting. Again, not good for like person's division, high speed stuff, but you'd be surprised. You can, you can update quite a few pixels pretty quickly. And then um, this is another uh, design. So this is... Um, this is a joystick uh, DE15 for a PC joystick, like an old style, like uh, Sound Blaster 16 style. Um, and it's connected to uh, an another ATtiny uh, 816. And this has two potentiometers in it and then a bunch of buttons. But I thought it would be kind of cool to make it easy for people to uh, connect to old style PC joysticks. And then, you know, you could use like the buttons or like, you know, whatever flight con sim controller stuff. Um, with modern electronics, and you can control this. So I connect this uh, through to any, uh, like a Cutie Pie, which is running a native HID program, and then you can convert it to HID. So this would, you know, this would be your little adapter helper. So those are the three um, Seesaw designs. And don't forget the Seesaw code, the peripheral code, is um, open source and it's on GitHub. So just go to, um, show you. It's called Seesaw Peripheral. So this is the code that you run on the, oh, can you go to the uh, computer? Sorry. Um, this is the code you run on um, the ATtiny chip and it reads I squared C commands. And there's a lot of examples for different devices. Uh, so this might be handy for some people. You're like, you wanna do NeoPixels or some of the products we have, PWM encoders, um, uh, fast Fourier transforms, et cetera. Okay, so that's um, that's the stuff I've been working on. Um, and then I thought we would go into the great search. All righty, here we go. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with KJ Key. The great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, the late is produced by our engineer and help you guys you find everything you need to find on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the great search this week? Okay, so this is a, uh, let me find one second. Okay. Uh, watching. Okay, so we had a question. Okay, this is a great example. Um, we had example, uh, uh, sorry, let's go to the computer. Sorry. Um, we had someone uh, write in on, I think, the comments to this video, and they said, hey, um, I want to get a panel mount button that's like lit up that has latching action where you push it once to turn it on and push it once to turn it off. And you can see here, like the, um, the button gets indented, it latches in, and we call this like a latching button um, as compared to a momentary button, which is like a tactile switch where you press it. And then when you release it, it opens up and they were like, it's really tough for me to figure out how to find, I just want to find a panel mount on off switch like this with a with a press button and maybe uh, you know some sort of light in the background um to let me know when it's on or off can you help me learn how to search it and i was like that's a great idea so we do take user requests um so let's show how to go to digikey and find a panel mount switch and uh one that has latching on off control all right so we're at digikey so let's look for let's just start with um panel mount switch so we don't have to uh, search panel mount first, but um, I figure it's a good, it's, it'll give me a good start to what I'm looking for. So there's key lock switches. These are like ones that have locks and there's toggle switches. You know, toggle switches are, you can use them as on off switches and people do, you know, up is on, off is down, like light switches. Um, rocker switches are also 
always going to latch, right? Because you have to mechanically move them up or down. But this person particularly wanted a push button switch. So push button switches are going to include both uh, momentary and latching. And those are the two kinds. Okay, so first up, let's, um, of course, only look at active. I mean, there's a lot of products. And let's, just because there's so many, let's also only look at in stock and non-marketplace just to, because there's 176,000. So let's pare it down to, to some reasonable number. Okay, so these are some push buttons. So the, you already see, like, there's some pretty nice options here. Um, square, red, you know, uh, PCB mount, lots of panel mounts. Um, so for sure, there's going to be something here. So the first thing that they wanted was, um, again, that switch function. They don't want it to be like press um and then release which is called momentary like it's only on when you press it. they want it to hold whatever they press it and so that's under switch function and there's this is very confusing because there's a lot there's like off momentary and there's off momentary momentary and there's off momentary on and there's off on off on 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 momentary on momentary off momentary on off like there's all these different types basically um momentary when it says mom, momentary, that means whatever is the opposite, like if it's off, momentary, it means it's normally off. And when you press it momentarily, it turns on. So let's just show you that even though it's not what this person wanted, this is kind of what most people think of when they think of a switch. So these, these are push buttons and they don't latch. When you press them, the two contacts connect. And when you release, that they disconnect again. So off momentary. And sometimes it's also called SPST NO, normally open. So single pulse, single throw. So there's only two contacts. They either touch or they don't. And normally open. And when you press, they connect. Okay, but that's not what they wanted. So let's let's turn off that uh, switch function um, and go back. So what we want is non momentary. We want it to be when you press it changes. And so we want it to go from off to on. Now you might be wondering, well, what's off, on, on? That means that there might be multiple modes or might be like multiple switch connects. This person just wanted on, off, um, not off, on, and then a different mode. So also there's like, why is there off, on, on, off? Well, you know, maybe it's like, it's indented when it's on or it's indented when it's off, but let's assume that either one of them is okay. So these are the two options. On, on would mean that there's two switch contacts so spdt so it'll go between two different throws um which is also maybe what they want but again we're going to go with the simplest stick just on off off on okay so now they've gotten rid of the the momentary contact stuff um some of these look familiar like adafruit stocks you know stuff similar to this this is a kind of nice little gothy switch it's got an led illumination ring that's very nice this one doesn't uh this is a latching push switch from jedco I love Jedco switches. Those are really great. Uh, square ones as well. We wanted one that had uh, an illumination. It had an LED. Um, so incandescent is used often like it's a, like neon for high voltages, like 120 volts. And you'll see it often like power um, uh, distribution strips. You know, you'll have the switch has like a flickering red orange light. That's like an incandescent or neon 120 volt. We want something that's LED. So we're just going to select LED, not incandescent. Um, but let's say any color is fine. You can always be picky later if you want red, green, or blue. Um, actuator marking, don't really care about this. But, you know, if you want a power switch labeling on it, that can, you know, that's a common request. Um, let's say we want uh, rounded. And let's see a couple options. And there's the voltage rating. Uh, this person didn't write up and say what voltage rating they want. But of course, if you want it to run 120 volt or 220 volt power switch, you would select it. Um, but let's look here. Okay, some nice options. So then um, let's look by pricing. Just let's see, like, let's get, because they were like, oh, I want an inexpensive switch. Um, ooh, so a couple of nice options here. Spandle switch and then yeah these are all going to be a couple amperes um 
let's see led red looks good this one is kind of nice this one this is, these are kind of these are cute looking this one looks good too um fairly inexpensive these switches this one has you know the illumination within um i will say like you know I, i'm not gonna I'm, I'm gonna pick one but to be fair all these are very good um like this one might be um a really good option if they want a metal button but i did kind of like the look of um these e-switch buttons they can do three amps at 125 volts they have a really easy they have like a nice black plastic like you know rectangular um cover and then you have a lot of space here to drill a hole for them um on the bottom you can barely see it but there's uh plus and minus for the leds and then you know the power switch itself available in red yellow and green um this is the diagram and then this is the data sheet and you know e-switch is like super reliable um these are going to last um many 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 cycles and be able to handle very high current and uh have good documentation for all of them and then of course if you need uh, slightly different specifications you can check those out but this was my um my pick for the great search i think this is a good option so there you go um dear fellow email writer um lots of switches available uh pick this one but there's also many more available for under 10 bucks that's a great search where in the world is that part i need the great search with dj king okie dokie that is our show for this week thank you so much everyone for joining us we have lots of stuff ahead this week and more including some surprises so we'll see y'all online thanks everybody Bye bye, bye.